if we're being honest with each other, this is probably not the video you want, but honestly, it's the video that you need. And this comes from somebody who went three years, I booked three meetings, I signed zero clients with the agency. And the truth is, it's because I was inconsistent. I just didn't enjoy the work I was doing. And therefore I wasn't doing a lot of it. And therefore I didn't get any results. It took me three years until I started getting results. And it's because I started focusing more on the agency. I actually started trying to be successful. I started working on it and then the results started coming. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to really quickly break down where I'm at now and how I stay productive when I'm running the agency, but most importantly, how I actually enjoy the work that I do now, because it's, it's really changed everything for me. It's changed the way that I approach my work and it's changed the results that I get. So let's go through them. The number one thing is that I always reinvested back into my workspace. So you can see right now, I've got a plant down here that by the way, looks like it's dying. So let's kind of forget about that. I've got a stand up desk that I'm using right now to hold this phone up. I've got a beautiful monitor. I've got a great workspace and it's somewhere that I want to work. I have this light up here that, you know, even I don't get a, a lot of great natural light in this room, but even on days where it's quite dull outside and cloudy I'm based in the UK. So it happens quite a bit. The light still adds enough light that ultimately it's a really nice workspace. And I think that's been really, really important for me. You know, even when I was working my nine to five, I spent a lot of money on this expensive chair. I spent a lot on my workspace. I've always put money into these things that I knew would stick around for a long time. And even my mattress, you know, which doesn't exactly correlate to work aside from the idea of energy, which is super important as well. But I spent like a thousand pounds on a mattress. I paid it off with credit when I was working a nine to five because I couldn't afford to pay it outright, but I knew how important it was to have an important, like a really good mattress. So the point is I've already, I've always been the type of person to just put money into things that I know I'm gonna do a lot. And the truth is I spend maybe between nine to 11 hours on my laptop every day. So I need to have a good workspace. I need to have this stand up desk where I can just, if I want to stand up and write, I've got a really nice, you know, I've got the keyboard, uh, a little bit broken, I should get that replaced, but um, got the keyboard, got this like nice, nice trackpad. I've got a really nice laptop. Like I spent a lot of money on a laptop and it just makes my work environment so nice. It's so clean. It's just clear. Um, I would show you a picture, but the truth is I need to polish a little bit and, and get rid of some of the dust before I would do such a thing. But the point is, the first point is, you need to make sure that your work environment is nice because I came from a nine to five work environment that was horrible. And I knew that that's one of the things I hated working about working in a nine to five. So I knew when I was working for myself, I needed to change that up. I needed to make sure that my work environment was good and suitable and conducive to a good working environment. And talking about conducive working environments, it also blends us into the next principle, which really just comes down to focus. And I would say like, I, I was thinking to myself the other day, people always say that knowledge is power, but the truth is focus is power because without focus, you cannot acquire the knowledge that you need to be successful. So I really believe that the truth is actually focus is power. It's the, the ability to be able to sit down and focus on one thing for an extended period of time that gets you results. So a couple of little bits, for myself. I mean, it really depends on where you are right now when you're watching this, not geographically, but where you are in terms of your journey. So if you're in a place where you're just kind of getting started working for yourself, I know that during those moments, it can be difficult to sometimes find the urge that you need to get up and do the work, unless your back's really against the wall and you need to make money. It can find, it can be sometimes be difficult to find your work to be compelling enough to do it. Right. But what I found myself in terms of focus is just, it's a bit like a medita it's a bit about a bit like meditation. Meditation definitely helps with focus. But more to the point, it's a muscle that you need to strengthen. And when you first get started, depending on where you're at, like if you're the type of person that hasn't been able to watch this four minutes without picking up your phone, or you just watch a lot of TikTok and I'm not throwing shade right now, it's just the world that we live in. If that's where you're at, you need to realize that you're already below people that can focus. And the people that can focus on something for an extended period of time are going to be the ones that are really going to succeed in this thing. So you need to be able to set aside uninterrupted time and to be able to just work. A little cheat code that I've recently discovered, and I, I kind of, I didn't mean to discover this. I kind of came across it accidentally. I set my phone up as a tripod and you know, on, on the iPhone, you've got that time, time lapse feature. 
where you set your phone on a tripod for say 20 minutes and you just work. And I did it because I think it looks cool. But the truth is it also enhances your productivity because you've got this video constantly on you, which makes you think, well, I don't want to go and, you know, start messing around because it's going to be on camera. Um, which is it being really insightful itself, but it also means that your phone is not accessible. It means that your phone is constantly recording the video. So I can't go in, I, click, I can't click on my phone and go on Instagram or whatever, you know? So in terms of focus, firstly, on the principle of the phone, just keep the phone away from you if you need to. I honestly can work with my phone on my desk now because I don't want to check it. I like the work that I'm doing, but it's only happened that way because I built the focus up initially and I went through those hard parts where I had to force myself to focus. So now we're just second nature. Like I was literally on Sunday, analyzing a bunch of data from our email marketing and I just sat there and I thought this is better than playing Xbox you know like I haven't played games in such a long time but I just thought to myself like I'm genuinely enjoying analyzing this data more than I sometimes enjoy playing games which is pretty crazy to some people so where are we at so far I want to quickly recap where we are before we continue number one make sure that you've got a really good work environment number two make sure that you've got the capacity to focus for extended period of times and breaking that down further leave your phone out of reach use do not disturb mode don't allow people to interrupt your magic time and your magic time what i mean by that is i my phone is permanently on silent and almost permanently on do not contact or do not disturb i don't pick up my phone when it calls unless it's my mom or my dad i do not pick up with any other people when they call my phone so with that in mind if somebody calls my phone and I'm working, I'm not picking it up. It's just not happening. And you've got to be strict with that. You've got to see these work periods as work periods. Just because you're working for yourself, it doesn't mean that you don't have a manager. It's just your manager has changed. You become your manager and you're the one that you've got to, you know, set standards for and keep up to that standard. Okay. The last point on focus, as I said, it's built, it's just like building a muscle you need constant repetitions to get it right. So when you're starting off, like if you really need to at the beginning, if you if your focus is really bad, like just, just don't shame yourself for where you're at. Just understand where you are. So what I mean by that is set a stopwatch and just put it there and see how long you can focus for. If you manage to get through even two minutes, great. Write it down, write down two minutes. Okay. Then reset the stopwatch and get back to work. And just keep tracking that and keep tracking it and trying to strengthen it. See what you can do to get that further and further. Don't allow it to procrastinate you by constantly setting a stopwatch, keeping an eye on it and whatever. Just set the stopwatch. And then the moment that you get distracted, keep track of how long it was and what your distraction was. And then what you want to do is systematically remove those distractions. So if you realize that it's because you keep picking up your phone, then you're going to want to go ahead and eradicate that, like just remove that distraction. So just remove your phone from your workspace. If you realize that it's because, like for me, I realized that it was because I kept getting up to get water. I had this, I don't actually have it with me now, but I, I used to drink out this like quite small glass. And I just realized that didn't make any sense because I was refilling the water maybe two or three times the amount using a small glass. So what I did is I got a pint sized glass and that's what I drink out of. And that way I don't actually need to change my glass very often. Maybe every hour, hour and a half or so, I'll go and get another glass of water. Um, and it, it just works really well for me. So in strengthening your focus, start like wherever you're at and whatever your distractions are, realize what your distractions are and then systematically get rid of them. That's just this is the way you gotta see this and strengthen it. So if you start and you realize that in the beginning you can only focus for two minutes, but we'll say, okay, well, how can I focus double the time? How can I start focusing for four minutes, right? So once you've removed those distractions, push yourself, say, okay, now I'm gonna focus for a good four minutes. You get to four minutes and I'm starting low because just I don't know where you guys are at watching this video. People are gonna be at varying levels. If right off the bat, you can focus for 15 minutes, then try and bump it up to 25, bump it up to 30 potentially. And then when you're at there, bump it up further. Me right now, I don't really, my time blocks aren't really, like my work blocks aren't really in terms of time, they're in terms of activities. So I will do one activity and when it's done, I'll take a break. And what that does is it allows me to make sure that I get that thing done and I reward myself by taking a break. If I ended up doing a work block that ended up being two hours straight and I do have these times where I can work straight two to three hours, in moments like that, when I'm done, I will feel in my head that I need to take a break 
and I'll go out, I'll take a little walk, even if it's just a 10 minute walk, just around, uh, around, you know, the houses close by and the road, I just take a quick 10 minute walk and I'll just come back, grab some water and get back into work. So you will be able to realize that different people have different capabilities and the more that you reward yourself for the work, the easier it will be to actually get the work done. Which I guess is the last thing here, is just reward yourself for being productive. It's like back in the day, I would, I would get the work done and then I'd celebrate by going out to the shop and buying like a milkshake or buying, like for example, when I booked my first few meetings, I rewarded myself by going out and buying a milkshake because it was a cafe like really close to where I live. Or maybe if you're really into, I don't know, if you like chocolate, then you set a target. Like today I'm gonna get all the things done that I need to get done. And then you reward yourself by doing that, by going out and buying a chocolate bar or buying out, going out and buying a drink. You know, if you like something that's not particularly healthy, but it's something that you do like and you enjoy, then why don't you just turn it into a reward? So you're helping yourself and you're, you're progressing in order to get those things. And with time, you'll probably end up stop liking those things because you grow as a person. But I, I think you get the idea. It's just setting these things as rewards. If you really enjoy watching YouTube videos like you're watching right now, just don't but do it impulsively and actually set time to go and do it. So for example, I also enjoy YouTube, especially technology videos, which is more of like a hobby. I do it for fun, like I, I watch for fun. So those ones I will do maybe like during my lunch, like during lunch, I've had four hour work block during the morning and then I take my lunch and then during the lunch, I do something fun. So maybe I will watch some videos, maybe I'll go for a walk, maybe I'll go out for lunch, I'll go to a local restaurant or a cafe, just doing different things. Um, and then what that does is it just makes sure that you actually enjoy the work that you're doing, which is super important. So I'm gonna throw one last bonus one and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you run away. Um, <laughs> but the bonus is just enjoy what you do. Like if you don't enjoy it and you're just forcing it, a lot of the time it's not gonna work. Um, sometimes, especially in your early days, you do need to force yourself to do the work a little bit because you don't love it. But if you absolutely despise what you're doing, then I would say that maybe, maybe running an agency is maybe not for you. Um, the truth is, if you, if the worst thing that you can imagine is working with people or working with data or writing copy or whatever it is that your working tells, then maybe, maybe it's just not for you. If, if this stuff is not what you actually want to do and you're just forcing yourself to do it because you want to make some money, Maybe it's not for you. Maybe there's a better route for you to take. That's that's more a thing for you. I personally find marketing fascinating. I think it's really interesting. Um, and the way that it comes into psychology and sales, like I find it really interesting myself. So that has always helped me. And the other tips that I've shared with you in the video just allow me to actually get good quality work done and be productive for extended periods of time. So if you are an agency owner yourself and you're looking for a more consistent and predictable flow of qualified sales calls and clients for your agency, click the first link in the description below. It will show you a little bit more about how I work one-on-one -on -one with agencies and I help them scale and add 20 clients within six months with a full guarantee. So click the link down below if you want my personal one-on-one -on -one help. If you don't, that's totally fine. Just click the subscribe button instead because I make these videos twice a week to help you usually acquire more clients. But right now, productivity is super important. It's a large part of that as well. So I wanted to make this video. But um, yeah, I hope you found this one interesting. If you've got any specific questions around productivity, pop them in the comment section. I do get back to every comment, so I'll help you out there. And aside from that, I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you again in the next one.